Hey everybody, this is Adam Sternberg with uh, CorporatePhotographers.com. We are here for another one of our bi-weekly broadcasts. Today we have a very special guest. I'm going inter to uh, uh, interview him in just a minute. Uh, he's actually off camera right now. I'm going to kind of mute him because you can hear him coughing a little in the background. <laughs> um, but we're going to—I'm going to introduce him in just a minute. He's a dear friend of ours, uh, uh, a person that we work with on a regular basis. He's absolutely dynamite. We're excited to have him here. Um, before we start with him, his name is Patrick. Before we start. Um, just want to talk about briefly our sponsor and how to find us and whatnot. Um, again, as a reminder, uh, we are sponsored. Uh, we have a new sponsor actually this time. It's uh, StreamYard, and it's actually the software that we are using for our broadcast. You can uh, find out more information about how we do what we do and the software that we use and how we do our overlays and, and the interviews and everything. It's a wonderful uh, program. It's actually online software um, that makes all this magic happen. And they're a wonderful, wonderful company. To get more information on that, all you have to do is go to uh, streaming.corporatephotographers.com and that will take you right there. And there's like special offers and information and all kinds of cool stuff in there. So if you're looking on starting up your own live stream service, we recommend them a lot and uh, fantastic program software and great support too. So uh, StreamYard.com, definitely recommend it, but you can find out more at uh, streaming at uh, streaming.corporatephotographers.com. And uh, one other thing I'm gonna mention as well, if I can get a browser up here, uh, please, if you get a chance, um, like and subscribe our, uh, our uh, YouTube channel. You can go right here to uh, corporatephotographers.com. You can click right up here on our YouTube link right at the top of the screen, and that will get you right over to our YouTube channel where you can uh, subscribe, like the videos, and get notifications once you uh, get to that. Sorry, internet's a little slow once we're broadcasting here. Uh, but once you get to our YouTube channel, all you have to do is go right over here to the right-hand side, click subscribe, and click that notification bell. The notification bell is real important because this way you can get notices on any time that we are doing a live stream broadcast. And so whenever we're broadcasting, you could get them right there. And we have all kinds of really cool guests coming up. Um, I'll talk about our guests that we're gonna have on Thursday in, uh, at the end of this broadcast. He's gonna be really cool to have on here too. We're looking forward to that as well. And so, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna switch back over here. So our, um, our next guest, as I kind of flip back around over here, sorry. Kind of clicking too many buttons at once. So our uh, our guest for today is a, a very, very dear friend of mine. His name is Patrick Wright. Uh, Patrick is a local DJ here in Vegas. Um, he's also a dance instructor. So he's kind of like really engrossed in, in music and everything that we do, um, very much so on a corporate level. Um, Patrick is our default go-to guy whenever we need anything for music. So we, uh, as many people already know, as certainly our clients know, we provide a lot more services other than just still photography and videography. We do um, a lot of other things as well. And um, a lot of times our clients come to us and they say, hey, listen, we've got this party and we know you're shooting it. Do you know any good DJs in town? Or you know, do you know any other kind of talent that might, might be able to get into our event that might make it a little bit better? And so we have this great network of people that we work with that we recommend to all of our clients um, because they're professional, they're great talent, talented people, they're easy to work with, and, and Patrick is one of those people. Um, and so I'm gonna bring him on now, Patrick. As I click over here, I'm gonna get him on screen. And if everybody could welcome Patrick right here. There we go, beautiful. Hi, Patrick, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. How are you doing, Adam? Very cool. And you sound just like thunderous and fantastic. I was talking to Patrick off camera or on camera here before we started the broadcast. And you know, everybody has a lot of different ways of doing these live chats. Uh, some people just use the camera in their computer. Uh, some people use, you know, barely even a little bit more than that. And uh, these people are wireless. And so we, we coach a lot of people prior to doing these chats um, on what kind of equipment to get set up, how to do it, and to make the best quality. And sometimes people have that ability, sometimes not so much. Patrick, in addition to being a DJ and a dance instructor, is also a, a very accomplished videographer. We actually use some of the same gear. Um, in fact, I think we're, we're even using the same camera to broadcast, both of us on different ends here, uh, to broadcast this stream. And uh, so it's no, it comes as no surprise, Patrick, that you look and sound great. Um, so welcome did, to our did, chat here. Did you expect anything less? Come on. Nothing less. Absolutely not. You know, <laughs> exactly. and, and, and I know, you know, I know I'm kind of chuckling a little bit, you know, because Patrick, is, as long as I've known you've had that mohawk. And, you know, it's, it's always funny because, uh, you know, I always joke because Patrick is like one of the nicest people you will ever meet. But it can be, you know, don't let the mohawk intimidate you. Right. Because, you know, he's like <laughs> this really big, uh, big dude here. Uh, and, you know, he's in incredible shape and, you know, what the Mohawk just makes the whole thing. Uh, but it always kind of makes me chuckle a little bit, you know, every time we see him, because, you know, this is actually I'm going to show a picture here if I can get to this. Um, 
if I can, uh, let me scroll through this one second. I got a picture of you, Patrick, from one of oh, the, okay. uh, gigs that we've done. yeah. Oh, really? so the, the, oh yeah, of course. So, uh, one of the jobs that we've done, so, you know, Patrick, the way, the way we first, and I've known him for a very long time. Um, the way we first got to know each other is, uh, let me, uh, let me see if I can get, there we go. Um, the way we first met, uh, first time we booked you, I remember, and we, we every year they request you. Uh, we have a client, and I'm going to put this up on the screen. We have a client who absolutely adores you. And uh, every time we do an event, there's Patrick right there. Every time we do an event, um, you're like the first person they request. So no. um, we, it, the, cli the, cli the client is a, it's a credit union, actually. It's Westar Credit Union. And right. uh, we've been working with them year after year after year. They're a wonderful client. And every year they do kind of like a different theme. I don't remember what the theme was on this. It was more of a formal theme. I think they went last year. That was um, um, that was the one where they actually wanted me to teach them a dance. That that's was, correct. Right. That, that was themed. And that was Peabody. Uh, that's it right. Was a, it was a 1920s type of theme. And that's they wanted a dance that was that era. So I taught them Peabody. That's it. That's exactly right. And, you know, and they're like, Hey, we want to learn the Peabody. I'm like, learn the what I, I you know, I don't know. I don't know the first thing about it. <laughs> so I'm like, um, yeah, I, I'm sure Patrick can do that. So I call him up and I'm like, Patrick, do you know what the Peabody is? And I don't remember if you remembered, I remember you looked it up, but, but you, you oh, no, I knew what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah I knew what it was. Okay. So, so yeah. So it was funny. And you, you taught this room full of people uh, to do this like 1920s dance. And it was like the most phenomenal thing. And, uh, and everybody loved it. Yeah. And, you know, in years past, they've done like a Hawaiian theme and stuff. I think that year, yeah, it was kind of like a great Gatsby theme. And so they asked if you could right. teach them that. Exactly. And, and, and I think that's what makes you such a, you know, multi-talented person is you're not, oh, you're not just a guy that pushes a button and hits play, you know? And so, uh, you know, a lot, some you, you mean, like you it. mean, that's not awesome to just push a button and not really do anything else. Yeah. Right. You know, you just you know, load up an iTunes playlist. Uh, exactly. What, so what, what got you into being, so let's start with the DJ side of what you do. So what, what got you into doing that? What's your background in music? How'd you kind of work your way? Into uh, um, honestly, that all started ages and ages ago um, with, I was moving equipment for a guy who did karaoke. And so I started filling in for him because uh, he liked the way I announced things and I was comfortable on the mic and I could, I could actually sing and not amazingly, but I can sing. And, um, and I, so it started being a karaoke DJ and then I got uh, more and more music. I got, and I just started experimenting at home. Um, what I figured out though, is that I like the personality side of it. I like the, so I was never a mixing DJ, like people, mm -hmm. You yeah, know, like when you say DJ, DJs, right. yeah, when people say DJ, they think, oh, nightclub. It's like, no, it's like I could make, I could get by doing that, but I wouldn't be great because that's mm -hmm. not my specialty. My specialty is running the event, is making sure everything happens the way it should, uh, coming up with ideas that they may not have thought of, um, things like that. And I just, and that's why I migrated towards the wedding DJing um, and the corporate also, but a lot of wedding DJing, people don't realize um, when they're shopping for DJs, they think, oh, we just need somebody to play music. No, you don't. Yeah, you I need some, that. yeah, you need somebody who can come up with the ideas of how to make this thing really great. And uh, again, some people rely on their wedding planners, which they do a great job. But the, you know, you wouldn't believe of all the weddings I do how often I'm coming up with solutions to, you know, the bride wants it her way. She wants us right. her way. Well, I have to take her idea that wouldn't work and somehow make it work by changing it around and suggesting things and somehow making her feel like it was her idea right? And, right, right. <laughs> in order yeah, to get it to work out all the time. Yeah. I, you know, and I always <laughs> say for, you know, I've been, I, I'm an adamant believer in this is that, you know, the two most important people to run any event are a DJ and the photographer, because they, they tend right. to, especially DJs, um, be, you know, I think DJs tend to be more on the planning and organizing side um, right. up until the event starts. And then once the event starts, the photographer is kind of having to deal with a lot of putting out fires. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's really important to have a, a solid, I mean, and it sounds kind of trivial, but it really is important to have a solid DJ because you do more than just, you know, plus play. Oh, um, absolutely. You know, you're, absolutely. you're organizing everything from, you know, getting people on dance floors and, and making announcements and doing drawings and, you know, all these different things that I've seen you do. Um, it, it's a lot, you have to be more of a personality rather than just a guy, you know, exactly, exactly. And, and Two not, totally different animals. Yeah. And no, I, I'm absolutely. Shot 
I've shot so many corporate events. I wouldn't say a lot, but I've shot enough where, you know, I've, I've run into really good DJs, but I've certainly, I, I, you know, a lot of times those are very memorable. The bad ones are even more so. And, you know, guys that just, you know, they can't speak. They're uncomfortable in front of a crowd. Right. They, you know, and oh my gosh. And it makes everything um, very uncomfortable, you know, for the whole room when, when you don't have a solid person who's in command of the event running things. And, and Right, you know, right. No, and, yeah. and that's the thing is that a lot of times when people get into DJing, what's the first thing they think of music. And it's like, of right. course, of course, that's important. And course, of course, having good taste in music, knowing how to read a crowd, knowing what they're going to respond to is right. important. Um, but they don't take into account. No, if you're an event DJ, okay. There's so much more involved than just playing oh, yeah. music. And oh, for sure. You know, you, you have to help them. You have to plan stuff. You have to come up with last minute solutions. Like I was saying before, um, you know, and just being able to make it happen so that by the, at the end of the event at the, uh, excuse me, at the end of the event, the, either the person in charge or the bride and groom or whoever is saying, Oh my God, that was amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what you want. That's what you right. want to go for. You don't want to just play music. And at the end they're like, okay, thanks. Thanks. You know, it's like, well, no, you know, it's like, I, 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 I remember at my wedding, you know, it's funny. I, I, my, I, my wife and I still joke about this. So my, my wife, and I, when we got married, she has two sisters, both of which are younger than her, but all three sisters got married in, within the same year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, can oh, imagine wow. what, an over, what an overload that was for her parents, right? Um, I remember even her father wrote um, the same speech. He, he like just wrote it down for all three weddings and just changed the names. It was kind of funny. <laughs> That's um, great. But, yeah. Oh, it was awesome, right? But, you know, what, one of the things that was funny was is that I don't know how the, it, it somehow became a tradition between the two weddings prior. Um, my sister-in-law, Danielle, who I absolutely adore. I got to say this on camera. I absolutely right. love you, Danielle. Um, but she had this thing where it was like, uh, she's a big, I don't know if she's a big ABBA fan or something, but there was okay. some ABBA song that she absolutely, she, they played it at her wedding. They played it at, at the other sister's wedding, Krista's. And for some, so Danielle had taken it upon herself to think, Hey, we're going to make this tradition and play it at Adam and Bethany's wedding. And I absolutely loathe ABBA. I absolutely cannot really? stand. Oh yeah. Wow. You, you play five notes to ABBA and I am gone, man. I hate, I just not a fan, right? I hope no offense to all the ABBA fans, not a personal fan. Okay. So, uh, uh so, so my, <laughs> my wife had gotten wind that uh, Danielle was going to, you know, hey, get, go talk to the DJ. And I already worked out kind of a playlist and everything with him, you know, right. And we had, we had a great DJ at our wedding, but I went over to him the morning of the wedding. And I said, listen, I need you to do me a big favor. He goes, what's that? I said, if my sister walks over here and requests a song, I don't care what it is, you are not to play it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. I was like, you really got to trust me on this. I don't care how much pressure she puts on you. I don't right. care if she pulls the, I'm the sister. No, you don't play anything she requests. <laughs> and he's like, okay, great. And, and it all worked out great. You know I mean? I'm kind of making a you know, big deal out of this, but it really wasn't. But, but you know, it's like, I got to imagine you get some really bizarre, I mean, you know, oh, I've heard of oh, DJs yeah. that have had to rig drawings before and, you know, all well, kinds here, of what, yeah, what here, are some of the things that you've run into like that? Here's the funny thing. And well, actually, I, and I had planned on making a list that's kind of a mental list right now right. of all the do's and don'ts of, of particularly weddings. Okay. And, but here's the thing that is the, one of the most annoying things you run into when somebody comes up and says, Hey, can you play this song next? It's like, <laughs> no. no. It's like, it's like, who do you think you are? It's like, no, it's like, there's a, you know, something I'm doing here that goes from this to this, to this, to this. It's like, so I'm like, no, I'll get it on when I can. And funniest, funny side note to that one time, I swear to God, I'm not kidding about this. I said that to this guy, I said, no, it won't be next, but it'll, I'll get it on when I can. He pulls out a dollar and goes, what about now? And I'm going, seriously? Hey, big spender. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, it's still the same. That's answer. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Add, add, add a couple more zeros on it. We'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, um, oh, that's funny. No, there's, there's so much. And, and I deal with, I mean, I do a lot of corporate, but I do like a ton of weddings. And there's just so many things, so many little things that you have to rely. Like, I get you want your wedding the way you want it. You have to rely on your DJ's judgment. If he tells right. you something, listen to it. Don't go, well, no, that's the way I want it. Because one thing I get, I fortunately, I don't get it a lot. Most of the time they listen. 
But when a bride is walking out to a song and she's like, oh, this song's really important. I want to hear the whole thing. And I'm going, I'm like, it's going to take you about 30 seconds or less to walk from there to the altar. Right. So you're going to spend about two and a half to three minutes just standing there mm -hmm. listening to a song. Right. And, Which means everybody's going to be in this. It's this awkward right. moment for everybody. Right. And most of the time they listen. But then every once in a while you go, no, really, that's what I want. And of course, sure enough, they get up there to the altar and it's just awkward. And yeah. and sometimes they end up motioning. You like tell the DJ to cut it. It's like, that's what I told you. <laughs> The first place we, we went through this, yeah, right. <laughs> Do you remember the conversation we had like twenty minutes wow. ago? And but but that that's the biggest thing is is to listen to, uh, listen to your DJ when he makes suggestions. Because what I'll do is they'll say, "Okay, I'd like this to happen." Well, I look at whatever this is, and if it's totally easy, it's like okay, fine. But if it's something that really wouldn't work, I will try to figure out a way to make it work, to like do it at a different time or switch something up so that they still get it. But because trust me, and this is going to sound really bad to say, but it's absolutely true. If all DJs did the wedding exactly the way the bride and groom wanted with no suggestions, no changes, they let's just be nice and say they would not be good. Yeah, they'd be out. Of, yeah, there would, there would be, be a lot. Of, be of there would be a lot of awkward, bad moments in the wedding where you're like, "Oh, why'd you do it that way?" Sure. It's like you know. So I, I, remember, I remember once I ran into this DJ. We were doing a shoot one time, and you know, this is kind of like that interesting moral dilemma of what to do. And he was telling, and I, I was having this conversation with him, and he was like really stressed out because of a job that he just came off of. And uh, I was talking to him. I said, "Well, what was the problem?" He says, "Well." It was a large corporate event. It was like for like a couple of thousand people. And they were giving away, they were doing a drawing for two cars. So oh, wow. two, two attendees in the room were going to win a car. Okay. Right. So it, so it was like really cool. I, and I, you know, they had like a, the big fish bowl and the, you know, the whole thing. And so uh, they had the DJ do it. You know, they had, uh, they didn't have an MC. I think they had a, uh, one of the executives is there or something giving, you know, to, to do part of the drawing, but they were having the DJ manage this. Right. And uh, he was telling me, he says that the problem he had was like, like a minute before, you know, they were going to go out on stage and it was this big stage at the hotel, you know, and uh, like a minute or two before they're going to go out on stage, somebody walks over to the DJ says, and they give him a piece of paper and they said, here's the two winners. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, we need these two people to win. And it was, and he, oh, he really? Goes, yeah. And they were like, and they were going to rig the drawing and they're like, yeah, it's like oh, two wow. big clients of ours and we need these. So, so however you're going to figure it out, just remember their names, but whatever you draw out of the fishbowl. Yeah. These are the winners. Wow. <laughs> and he's That's... like, Holy crap. You know, like, what do you do to that? Right. Right. So, so, you know, his, his big dilemma with this, was, and, and if, if I remember right, he wrote down the names on his hand actually. So he right. like scribbled yeah. it on. His yeah. Hand so he could just read it and reach yeah. it. Right. So, um, so, so, you know, he told me, he said, yeah, it was like this major dilemma because, um, you know, he didn't know what to do. So he wrote the two names on his hand and he, you know, pulled out the fake, fake name, you know, really right. said Mary, Mary Jane on it, but no care. Winner is Bob Smith, right. Or whatever the name was. And so, uh, you know, and that person comes up and wins. And I think he's, if I remember the story, right. He says he had, he's sitting there struggling in his head. Like this really isn't right. You know? Right. Of and course. so, so he decided, you know what, I just can't do this again. And so the next hand number he pulled out, you know, the next card he pulled out was the actual name on the card. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And so, so what he did was, and the, you know, that winner comes up and they win this car. So, you know, the event was over and obviously somebody came over and said, Hey, you know, what, what happened? You know, we were supposed to have right. this guy win. And I guess what he did was, is that right after he drew the name out of the fishbowl, he licked his thumb and he wiped his hand out. He goes, I just couldn't remember the name. And he goes, I didn't know what else to do. I, you know, and I was in a jam. What else am I going to do? Go. Yeah. So I had to draw a real name. So that, that's kind of how we got out of it, so to speak. But yeah, what a crazy, you know, I mean, who does that? <laughs> right. I, I, you know, there's definitely kind of a, you know, some serious moral issues there. Right. But uh, yeah, you know, right. but, uh, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing how the DJ handled it. Right. So what else would you do? Well, that's, a, that's the thing is that uh, like the, in that situation, okay. If you have a moral problem with it, you talk to him about it beforehand say, I don't want to announce this. I don't want to do yeah. this. You don't, you don't do that. That like to me, okay, it's nice that you had a moral problem with it, but that's your job unless you ask yeah. them, Hey, I'd rather not do this. And well, you yeah. have somebody else announce it. 
it's like it's that simple. You don't do that, then yeah. have a burst of conscience and go, oh, okay, now I'm gonna do what they didn't want. They're paying you. That's right, like, right. That's no, what I, they I want. Totally got it. Yeah, you know, but you but know. it's but it's this interesting little kind of you know, you know, moral exercise, you know, it's like you know how you deal with that. It's such a crazy thing. Um, you know, yeah, yeah I mean that's we, definitely we, we that's definitely a right and wrong way to handle that. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I 100% agree. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I, I, if it were me, I probably would have said that too. You know, I, I just can't do this in good conscience, but you know, you know, Mary from accounting, she'll do it or something, you know? I, yeah. It's yeah. How, how, in a room full of people, how hard is it to find somebody who will shut up about what they're doing and, right. <laughs> and who'll come up and go, okay, it's so-and-so. You know, yeah, um, it's such a weird thing. I mean, well, what what are some other odd? You know, I've got to imagine all yours is doing this. What are some of the oddball things that you? I mean, I got to believe you've gotten a few. I mean, I know you said you kind of have this mental note of this, but like, what are some other weird requests that you've got? Well, you know, and and honestly, some of them are just uh, some of them are pet peeves. Some of them are, you know, but okay, like here's all a right, let's cre let's create a top like a top three list of things to not screw with your 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 videographer about. <laughs> what would they be? What what, what oh, things are pet peeves? Oh, you mean oh, you mean the DJ? Um, Sorry, the DJ. Yeah, I say photographer. My bad. Yeah. Well, DJ, this, well, well, this one, this one really does. Okay, the first one is one of the most annoying, but it doesn't really affect me per se. But because we have this platform, I'd really love to just put this thought in people's heads. Sure. When a people, uh, people RSVP, but don't show. Okay? Oh yeah. Or work. Almost worse is people who don't RSVP but show up thinking, "Well, I was invited," and it's like, "Yeah, party okay, crashers." Or, do you, or, yeah, do you or, really? Yeah. Do you really not get? Well, first, for the people who don't show, do you really not right. get that they could have spent seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars on your meal, and you just didn't show? So mm -hmm. you just cost the bride and groom a hundred dollars. People don't like, realize, I, I think, I mean, they, I think they do in weddings, but it, it, the same thing applies in the corporate parties that we work in, you know, it's, right. it's you know, a, a lot of times, even with buffets, you know, a lot of corporate events we do, their you know, foods brought out buffet style. Um, right. And uh, usually it depends on what hotel we are at. We know which one's not to eat at because <laughs> cause they've right. got this. <laughs> event. Um, but, you know, it, but it's always interesting. And, and even then, you know, a lot of times venues will do head counts. They'll, they'll check number of guests and, you know, right. all these people are paying for it. And I, I get a lot of times, especially in the corporate world, Right. Um, you know, th you know, there's definitely uh, money there, but you know, it's not endless money. And, you know, a lot of times when people feel that there's, you know, a lot of money being spent on people that don't show or things right. like that, they're less likely to do an event next year or they'll scale it back. Right now, you know? the one I, the, the one I do, uh, the one I do get, and this is just hilarious to me. And this is at any event, corporate, what anything, it's when somebody some come, uh, comes up and says, can you play something else? It's like, while you're in the middle of a song or like, just like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause it's not something they like. And I, not I'm it. like, and usually I'm like looking at the dance floor going, you see the crowded dance floor, correct? Yeah. Obviously like, so, like it, yeah. so cause you don't like it. You want me to now just suddenly change the song to something completely different and the vagueness of going, Oh, can you play something else? Right. Right. Okay, yeah, we've what got kind of odd personality to take to want to do that to get bothered. It's, it's, it's like that. something else. Okay, let me get right on that. It's like think before you talk, people. It's right, right. Like, I'm like, okay, if you want to hear a hip hop song, if you want to hear a country song, if you want to hear a techno song, whatever you want to hear, it's like, okay, then tell me, but don't say something stupid like that. Well, what, what, what are some of the, well, what are some of the interesting things you hear from some of your clients? I mean, you know, I, I imagine, you know, it's like us, you know, we, you know, nine times out of 10, the jobs we get are pretty easy to do. They're, they're low maintenance. Clients are wonderful to work with. Once in a great while we, we run into kind of an oddball. Um, you know, I, I, you know, uh, yeah. So I don't want to name names of course, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we've run into a couple odd situations here and there too. Have you ever had any, just like you, you walked into a job sometime to scratch your head as far as what you're doing or, uh, mm, God, it doesn't happen too often because usually at least somebody, at least one person knows what the heck's going on. Uh, but yes, I have gone into, uh, that happens more in corporate events because weddings are yeah. more planned. But yeah, corporate yeah. events, I have walked into a room, there's no table for me. There's nobody there knowing what's going on. There's nobody there who knows where the table's supposed to go once catering actually gets me the table. There's nobody there in charge to talk to and go over the itinerary. And you're just going, okay, so you, you basically have to take charge, get catering to bring you a table. <laughs> you 
then you set up hoping you're in the right place because otherwise you're going to be needing to pick up the table and move it somewhere. Right, right. And you know that kind of just that kind of lack of preparation of not you know, not conveying, Oh, by the way, the DJ is going to be here at this time. He might need a little direction. You know, he's- <laughs> we, we've had, we've had jo- I mean, I, I, I can, we'll probably do a whole broadcast um, of just all the crazy things that we've had to deal with. I, I remember one of my favorite ones was we were shooting video of an event. And so we got our camera set up. We're on a, on a riser. We've got audio patches in with the, um, with the sound guys. And, you know, it's for an event of about three, 400 people. Right. And uh, so we're all ready to go. You know, the event's starting in like an hour. We do our sound checks and we're pretty much ready. We're going to, you know, take a little breather, go to the restroom before we got to start shooting for a couple hours. And everything's ready. Room set. Chairs are there. Stage is there. And then uh, the speaker walks in and goes, oh, I hate the way this room's laid out. Let's rotate everything 90 degrees. <laughs> he's, actually, he's actually him. And we're, we're just like, wait, what? And so everything's got to get literally picked up and rotated. Wow. Chairs got to move. Stairs, stage has got to move. Lighting's got to move. Camera's got to move. Sound's got to move. Everything's got to move 90 degrees because somebody didn't like it. Yeah, I've um, never I've never had that happen. I've never had Yeah, that was one. Yeah, had, the big, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. The big, no, just the biggest one I've ever had is just, again, disorganization, not communicating. Um, or the second worst one is when you got the person in charge of the event telling you one thing and the CEO of the company telling you something oh, else. Yeah. And you're just going, okay, who do I listen to here? And then you have to go back and forth because you don't want this person thinking you ignored this per, you know, it's like, or this person thing you ignored them to listen to this person and vice versa. Right. It's like, Okay, guys, get it together and tell me what you want. <laughs> like we we, I, we talked about this on another broadcast. We had um, one time we did we showed up for a shoot. And it was a bunch of us on the shoot. We show up and it was at Caesars, if I remember right, right. and at Caesars Palace. We show up and it was uh, you know events spread out over multiple ballrooms and whatnot, pretty much all throughout their convention center. And so um, we were told in advance by the event planner that the client doesn't like photos shot wide. Everything's supposed to be shot really tight, really close up, and we're like. Okay, it's okay. kind of an odd request, but sure. What, you know, we usually shoot both. Um, and then we get into a meeting at the actual event, and we're standing there in their little planning office. And you know, with, with the event planner's not there, but now we're talking directly to the client, and he right. comes to us and says, "Hey, just just so you know, I like everything really wide, so nothing close up, nothing." And we're like, "Well, wait a minute, that that is not at all like what we were just told." And so we get the event planner in the room, and they literally get into a screaming argument over this right, right. in front of them. I mean, I it just defied all that. And we're trying to explain to them, guys, there's no reason to, I mean, literally they're yelling at each other and we're like, there, there's, there's no reason to have this argument. We can do both. Oh, okay. We're like, yeah. You know, when I actually have run, in, you know, when I've run into that and it's, and it's happened so many times is the bride and the mother of the bride. Oh, two, yeah. two totally different opinions. And because she's mother of the bride, it's like, Oh, okay. Well, my word is law. It's like, do you and ever deal have, with bridezillas? And I mean, have you ever run into that? Not off. And I'm going to, this is going to sound like I'm patting myself on the back here a little bit, but not often because I know how to handle them. I know how mm-hmm. to talk to them to let them know I've got you, I've got this, you know, your wedding's going to be great. And they just, and weirdly enough, I've always had that when I'm DJing is when I speak to people, they, they feel like, okay, he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. I don't, right. I don't sound insecure. I don't sound unsure of myself. I know what I'm doing and yeah, you have, you have I'll to make be this happen. While you're doing. Sure. Right. And so, uh, and it's actually funny because one of the venues where I DJ, whenever they do have a difficult bride, they're like, send us Patrick because, mm-hmm. cause I just know how to handle them. I know how to talk to them to calm them down, to get them not because they're whole, they're crazy because they feel like things aren't going to get done. Well, right. if you, if you, let them know and you assure them it will get done. It'll get done the way you want. They calm down. They're okay. They're not just crazy women. They're, you know, they're, they're getting crazy because they're afraid their wedding's going to sure. go to hell. Well, they, and, well, they want everything to be perfect. And yeah, you know, it's right. Right. Them, sure. You know, but in those situations with a mom and the bride, we have a standing rule. Listen to the bride. It's her wedding. Right. Like, so, go. so mom can tell you all this. Mom might even have paid for it. Doesn't matter. It's like, if it's too bit different, go with the bride because that's her way. You know, and it's, it's weird. I I've heard many horror stories. I, I haven't shot a wedding in years, 
Yeah. Um, but you know, but back when I used to shoot weddings, which was a long time ago, uh, I, I hadn't. I don't think I've shot a huge volume of weddings. I, I probably it's definitely several dozen of them. Right. Um, you know, probably closer to about 40, 50 weddings I've shot in my career. Um, but I never once ran into the whole bridezilla thing. I, I never actually right. experienced yeah. that. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's funny that you say that, actually. I actually find that kind of neat because I'm sure they're out there. I know they exist and I hear the horror stories. I, I've i never run into one. So, I don't know, maybe I just dodged a bullet, I guess. But Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you, pro- you probably did. But uh, but no, and, and it could be your manner, too. It could be. Yeah, that's terrible. That, possible, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if you sound like you know what you're talking about and you're speaking to them clearly and logically and, uh, you know, it, I just I notice it just it calms people down. It's mm-hmm. like I, I had one that was not even a bridezilla. She was just so wound up. She was so nervous. And I went in and talked to her like I always do before the wedding starts, went over everything. And she just and it was actually funny because after our meeting, like normally I don't talk to them after the meeting until the uh, until the ceremony. And but after the meeting, I was doing my thing over by my booth. And she's like, she's like, can you get Patrick? And I'm like. Okay. So I went and I was like, what do you want to change something? And she was like, no, she just wanted to talk to me because just something about me calmed her down and made her feel more comfortable. And I'm like, okay, whatever it takes to make this wedding come off amazing. You know, if, cool. if I need to go, if I need to go in and talk the bride off a ledge, I'll go and do that. You know? Well now, and, and um, so now, so now let's, I want to talk about another part of what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so at some point you trans, and I know you, I want to kind of talk about this a little bit too. So now, in addition to being a DJ, and I know obviously, um, just like us, you know, as things have been kind of, you know, as, as the world kind of got put on hold for a little while, right. uh, you know, we're not working a lot of live events right now, but we're all looking for new interesting avenues of uh, staying busy. We're doing these live streams, uh, with interviews and, and guests, and we're going to start doing more uh, things on tips of photography and whatnot. Um, but in addition to that, you, you're a dance instructor too. So right. ha- yep. what, tell us about your background in that and, and tell us about your, uh, cause you just launched a new YouTube channel. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, that, that was actually a project I'd thought about for a while. And it's one of those things that, and, and that's kind of the way I am. I can have something in the back of my mind for years. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that now. Yeah, same and, here, I, yeah. and I just do it. Uh, I've been doing hip hop since I was in my teens. Um, I started doing the country stuff, the, the country two-step, cha-cha, the line dancing, all that stuff about 14 years ago. And uh, I started doing ballroom about five, six years ago. Uh, I just love all different forms of dance. And um, so, uh, but I really enjoy the country stuff, mostly because you use it the most, or at least I do, because every week the country, country bars, the country clubs are going, going on. So you can go out and use it. You can go out and have fun with it. Whereas if you do ballroom or you do other types of dancing, you kind of have to wait for a certain event or something. Uh, I mean, there's salsa clubs and things like that, but generally country is the most available. It's, it's hugely popular. I'd say. I, I, I was chatting with you earlier and, you know, I was, you posted a video on your YouTube channel the other day mm-hmm. and it was, I, I don't remember what the dance, I, I don't do a uh, country, <laughs> blind dance, cut, cut, not my thing. So, um, and it's not to say that I wouldn't love to learn it. It's just never had an opportunity to. And so I'm watching this uh, video that you produced and, you know, you shoot it in your home and they're, they're, mm-hmm. the quality is great. And, you know, but I, and you, some, I noticed one of them, you had a guest, there was a, uh, another dancer there with you and stuff. Oh, okay. And, mm-hmm. I, and I'm watching, and I'm watching these videos and I'm sitting here and I'm just like, I, I couldn't, if I lived to be a thousand years old <laughs> and practice this 10 hours a day, every day of my life, I would never be able to do this. I have two left feet. Right. Right. But, uh, but, you know, but one of the things you were telling me is that, you know, that was definitely the one I was watching was a little bit more advanced and okay. So I, I kind of get it. I just find it fascinating just how people pick this stuff up and they go to like a big country bar and they're all, I just, you know, I sh- we shoot a lot of corporate events and a lot of times at some of the country bars in Vegas right? Um, where people have corporate events and they do line dancing. And I'm just, every Every time I watch it, I just sit there. I'm fascinated by it. Um, it's just something that, you know, I look at it and I go, God, it's just so way over my uh, my scale level, you know, my, my pay grade but, on that. Well, the um, main reason. You teach this stuff. It's dynamite, you know. Yeah, that, uh, I appreciate that. The main reason I did it was twofold. One was, of course, for, uh, you know, the friends of mine, the people I know that, that uh, line dance and just to teach them. Uh, either dances that they don't already know or ones that they want to brush up on. Um, sure. Also, you know, also just to hone technique in the partner dances. Cause I do both. I do line dance 
uh, line dance videos and I do partner dance videos. Okay. And, um, but the second reason and the, and probably the, the bigger reason, and that's why I went the way I went with a website, with a YouTube channel and everything else is for a broader reach, because I want to almost handhold people into, Hey, I want to start going to country bars. I want to, <laughs> but you go in there. If you just go in there, you feel like a fish out of water. You feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then somebody will grab that would you, be me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody, and then somebody grabs you to dance and then you don't really know what you're doing. And if they're not a good leader or not a good instructor, they don't know what they're telling. And it's a big mess or can right. be. So I really just wanted to get people. That's why, the very first video that I did what or, or two is uh, basics for line dancing and then basics for two step to tell people what they should keep in mind as they're learning line dances, as they're learning more two step, all the rules and mostly the things to watch out for the things not to do. You know, it's like one thing I, I say in that video in my introduction to line dancing is if you want to get out there and learn a line dance, then that's awesome. Like if you don't know it, you want to get out there and try to catch on as people are doing it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Don't get in the middle. Do not get in the middle because you, uh, line dances follow a certain pattern. If you're not doing that pattern because you don't know it, you're going to get run into. And then you're going to think, oh, you know, that part, that's rude. They ran into me. It's like, no, right. you're, you're the rude one from standing the in the middle. On the road. Right. Yeah. You're standing so, on the road. Yeah. So you stand off to the side, you stand to the back of the room, wherever you need to stand to not be in people's way and then watch their feet and try to pick up. I, I absolutely applaud that. Um, but that was the purpose of the, of the videos is to get them there and to let them know if something is a beginner, like, cause like for you, like I, even two left feet, the right dance you could do. You know, it's just a matter of, yeah, there's some oh, high end dance. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, there's, totally count that for a second, yeah. Oh yeah. So there's some elaborate things, country two-step, maybe mm -hmm. somebody just does the basic or maybe they, all they know is an outside and an inside turn. Um, and, but I will be teaching people more elaborate stuff, cooler stuff, stuff that's really fancy that you're like, wow, that person knows what the heck they're doing, but it, you just go with your level. And that's what I wanted to do is I want something to where people could go to my site, say, I've never been to a country bar or I've been to a country bar, but I don't know what I'm doing. Watch a few videos and now they're comfortable. Now they could go there and, uh, and they could, you know, feel comfortable going in there and dancing, whether they're partner dancing, getting out there to a few, a few line dances. And one of the things I encourage is because again, <clears throat> I'm hoping my, website and my YouTube channel reach everywhere, you know, but mostly the U S right. What I always suggest is if you're thinking about, say you're in wherever Minnesota. Okay. And you you have a local country bar, go there, talk to the DJ, say, what are your most popular line dances? What do you play? What do you play the most? And he'll tell you. Sure. And then come back to my website and if I don't already have a video for it, write me then an email oh, and great. say, yeah, yeah. and say, Hey, could you teach this teach one? Could you, you teach this Copperhead that's Road? Great, yeah. Could you teach, you know, and, and I'll do it. I'll make a video about it because my, I my, my skill level is more like YMCA, I think is like the extent of my, you know, or <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically maybe, not moving your feet. Maybe the macarena, yeah. <laughs> you could probably do the Macarena if I worked really hard. <laughs> no, but, <yeah. laughs> but you know, but I no, but I mean, I think it's great. And I, I've watched, like I said, I actually have watched some of your videos. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, to a degree, I think you make it look very easy, you. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, certainly, you know, I, I like I said, I watch one and you're like, OK, so shuffle, kick, slide, move. And I'm like, well, 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 you lost me like 30 moves ago. Right. Uh, but I know that for people that are used to work, you know, used to dancing, used to doing this stuff, um, a lot of that's going to come natural. And the way you teach is really is really good. And um, and, the, and the quality yeah. of the videos are great. So, yeah, you know. Um, I'll, put up, I'll put up a look. So you have a website. Um, tell yep. tell everybody about your website. It, and then. Yeah, it is uh, how to how to dance country dot com, and go. it's all connected. So I have a YouTube channel. Which uh, if anyone goes and watches my videos, what I would appreciate is because I get a lot of views, a lot of people watching the videos, but not uh, not that many think to hit the subscribe button. Well, that helps me when you do that. So right. if you watch my videos, please go to my, you know, go to my YouTube channel and click 
subscribe. Um, Cause again, that helps me and I'll, I'm going to keep well, making and, videos. And I'm going to interrupt you here. The more, and, and, you know, I mentioned this earlier in our video, it's the same thing. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's, it's not only do you want to hit the subscribe button, same thing for you. Of course, you want to hit the notification bell because this way, every time you do a new video, they get an email. Right. So, exactly. you know, hey, Patrick's got a new video. And so it's a great way to kind of stay in touch with the, the follow people um, for right. channels that you like. And it all, and it helps us all out. So, yeah. Right, right. Now, welcome. now going back to what you had mentioned, uh, one thing that I do in the introduction video for line dancing is I actually cover, I don't just cover the rules of what not to do, but I also cover common moves that they put into line dances like shuffle steps, grapevines, rock sure. steps. Um, so the people That's know. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so well so that people know what they should be doing to those moves and right. that way <clears throat> excuse me that way uh and i actually say this in the video sometimes if they just get out there because uh, a lot of country bars will have line dance lessons either before or sometime during the night and if you go and take those that's great um, but what happens sometimes you could have 30 or 40 people on the dance floor and you, from where you are, you can't really see the instructor and what is, oh, okay. what his or her feet are doing. So it helps to know if they say, okay, rock step, right. You'll know, oh, Patrick showed me that. I know how to do that. Gotcha. And you'll, okay. and, and then you'll see people around you because the thing is watching other people's feet is good to a degree, but mm, not everybody is that precise in mm -hmm what they're doing, or they want to get fancy and they're going to change it themselves. And okay. so you're like, oh, that's the move. It's like, no, that's their version of the move. So it's always better if you can know what the instructor is telling you. Gotcha. So, okay. yeah. Makes sense. Right. Um, right. But yeah, so, uh, oh, and I also have a Facebook page. It's okay. face it's facebook.com forward slash how to dance country. You know, Perfect. kind of a kind of a recurring theme here. Yeah, right, right. And, and <laughs> as soon as I get 100 subscribes on my YouTube channel, then I can change my name. So when I when that yeah. happens, it will be YouTube slash How to Dance Country. So yep, totally got yeah. it. Cool. Exactly. Patrick, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for spending Thank the last time. It was fun. With us. And uh, so, and again, if you are watching this and, and you know, this is obviously going to be uh, sticking on YouTube, this will be live there in about 30 minutes. Um, Absolutely. so when, um, so, you know, anybody that's watching this, please go to Patrick's website, go to his Facebook page, like, and subscribe our channel and his, um, and uh, again, Patrick, thanks for spending some time with us. It was Thank a you. lot of fun and, and very informative. I I'm going to switch it. off here real quick as I kind of close this out. And, uh, so yeah, so we, um, uh, uh, so I got to hide that too. There we go. Beautiful. Um, and so, uh, everybody watching this, you know, we will be back on Thursday. We do uh, these uh, videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So we will be back on Thursday on um, my Thursday's guest is an actual local rock star and a uh, very, very, very cool guy. He's a dear friend. We've worked together on a whole bunch of great projects and the band that he is in here in Vegas, they're kind of very well locally known. Uh, he's actually in two bands, but they are just amazing. And it's going to be a real treat to have him on. And we're going to talk about all the kind of fun stuff that he does uh, being a rock star in Vegas. He's dynamite. So uh, his name's Ryan. I'm looking forward to having him here on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks for watching on our YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe. And if anything, we will see you on Thursday. Thanks, everybody.